Hi everyone and welcome to our series of SolidWorks Model Mania made in Fusion 360. Today, we are going to take up the challenge of Model Mania year 2015. As a best practice, always place our origin at the center of our model. Let's start off by creating this sketch on our XY plane. I'm going to head over to Fusion 360. Let's begin by creating a circle and to quickly head over to sketch mode, I'm going to hit C for circle, prompted to select a plane or planar face. Let's sketch on our XY plane. Let's start creating the smallest circle which is the one with the diameter of 50. I'm going to key in 50, hitting enter. Let me zoom in. Notice our previous command was a circle. With that in mind, I can right click to access our marking menu, head up and select repeat center diameter circle. Placing our center point at the origin. Next one, I'm going to key in 60. Hit C for circle. Placing our center point at the origin. Next one to be 75. Let's clean our dimensions up. I'm going to hover over 50. Left click and hold. Place our dimension here. Same with the 60. And place 75 over here. Next, let's turn the outermost circle to be a construction circle. I'm going to hit X for that. The shortcut for converting entities into a construction entity. Instead of extruding this profile right away, I prefer creating the sketch for the feature that will be over here. Let me begin by creating the circle, hitting C. Placing my center point over here. The diameter for this to be 10. Let me move the dimension over here. Next, I'm going to grab our line command, hitting L. In addition, notice our line command has an arc. That means we can create an arc within the line command. And to do that, let me first head over here left click to place our point for the line next i am going to left click and hold so notice we have created an arc i'm still holding my left mouse button and now i'm going to release and over here creating a line left click and hold to create an arc and release on this intersection Hitting escape. Let's close this gap by creating an arc. I'm going to hit S for shortcuts. Now this window varies from every workspace. In this instance, this is named as sketch shortcuts being in sketch mode. I'm going to search for our arc command, typing ARC, selecting three point arc. Let's place our first point here, left click here, notice the inferred tangent constraint, and left click. Hitting escape. Next, let's create a horizontal line, hitting L, coming from our origin up to here. Double left click, hitting escape, making sure this line is perfectly horizontal. Let's reselect this line and turn this into a construction entity. Moving forward, let's add constraints. Let me start off by selecting concentric. Our intent is to have the center point of this arc and the center point of this circle coincident with each other. Hitting escape. Heading up, selecting tangent. Let's add a tangent constraint between this line and this arc. This arc and this circle. 
hitting escape. In addition, instead of heading up to constraints and selecting a new constraint, I'm going to select this line. Hold control, selecting this line, and finally this line. I'm going to right click with this three entities selected. And notice here, Fusion 360 automatically suggests the possible constraints. In this instance, I prefer symmetric. Symmetric tool, still active. For symmetric, it's selecting the target symmetry objects, selecting this arc and this arc, and finally the symmetry line. Hitting escape, and I forgot to place a constraint between this arc and this line. So selecting them both, right click and select tangent. Hitting escape. Next, let's have this center point and this circle coincident with both of them selected. I'm going to right click, selecting coincident. Let's hit D for dimension and let's define the radius of this arc to be eight. Hitting enter, same with this arc to be eight. Hitting escape and let's check. Hitting D once more, and we need to add the angle between these two lines to be 30. Hitting Enter. And let's zoom out. It turned into black, meaning it's fully defined. Let's now select Finish Sketch. Let's turn this sketch into 3D. I'm going to hit E, the shortcut for extrude, and we're going to select the circular profile. For the direction, changing this to symmetric. Measurement, I want this to be whole length and the distance to be 20. Operation, new body, and selecting OK. Let's turn on the visibility of our sketch one. Notice during the creation of extrude one, we have the option to include this profile as well. This profile was excluded because our next intent is to create a circular pattern using features. So I'm going to hit E for now and extrude this profile and instead of keying in the same value as this extrusion I prefer to add intelligence by using a parameter so I'm going to hit cancel for now and head over to modify selecting change parameters and let me twirl this down under extrude I want you to take note of the parameter name, which is D8, the one with the 20 value. Selecting OK, hitting E once more for extrude, selecting this uh, profile. Let's change the direction to symmetric, measurement to be whole length. And for the distance, this time, we're going to key in that parameter, which is D8. Operation, join. With this, whenever the value of our extrusion 1 updates, our extrusion 2 will also copy that update and a value as well. Let's now create a circular pattern, but first let me turn off the visibility of sketch one. Instead of heading up to create and drilling down to select circular pattern, I'm going to hit S for shortcuts, typing P A T T and selecting circular pattern. The type, it will be features. For the objects, we are going to select our latest extrusion, extrude 2 on our timeline. 
left click on that activating axis selecting our Z axis and for the quantity it will be 3 compute option adjust angular spacing to be full and selecting OK let's remove the material here at the middle and to do that we need to update our sketch first so I'm going to head over to our sketches under sketch 1 selecting this right click and select edit sketch we're going to create lines so I'm going to hit L for line create a line from our origin double left click left click once more at our origin and double left click hitting escape let's add a, a symmetry constraint between this line so selecting this line holding control selecting this line and our symmetry line right click and select symmetry next I'm going to hit D for dimension selecting this line and this line the angle to be 45 hitting escape let's exit out of the sketch selecting finish sketch let's turn on the visibility of our sketch one head to our bodies folder turn off the visibility of a body one for now let's now create a cut extrusion I'm going to hit E for extrude selecting this profiles let's turn on the visibility of body one change the operation to cut and for the direction changing this to symmetric measurement I want this to be whole length let me pull this arrow up and notice on our drawing the cutaway has a distance of 10 and recall our extrusion for extrude 1 is 20 having a parameter of d8 so with that in mind I can key in here d8 and divide this by 2 operation cut and selecting OK and let's turn off the visibility of sketch 1 let's add the fillets on the corners and on the drawing it's a full round let's now hit F for a fillet selecting this edges and recall the parameter D8 we're going to utilize that once more I'm going to type in D8 and divide this by 4 creating a, a full round leaving the defaults and selecting OK let's create another circular pattern I'm going to hit S, typing P A T T, selecting circular pattern, the type to be features, selecting our extrude 3 and the fillet, activating the axis, selecting our Z axis, quantity to be 3, compute option to be adjust, selecting OK and simple as that we have created the phase one for model mania challenge 2015 thank you so much for reaching up to this uh, point in the video inviting you to join us in uh, facebook it's autodesk fusion 360 user group philippines and in linkedin we are fusion 360 worldwide users lastly Support us by subscribing to Autodesk Community Philippines as we train more students and educators into the world of Autodesk. Welcome to Phase 2 of Model Mania 2015. 
And the notable change for this challenge is this new feature and this hatch cutaway. Let's head back to Fusion 360. Let's head down to our timeline and move our timeline marker and inspect if we can reuse some of these features. I'm going to head over to move to beginning. Let's move one step. Move one step. Okay, so we can reuse this extrusion. Move one step. And obviously, this will be a, a new feature. Let me move back. Let's update sketch one. I'm going to double left click to enter sketch mode. And in this sketch, my intent here is to create a circular pattern within sketch mode. So I'm going to hit S for shortcuts, typing P-A-T-T, and selecting circular pattern. Let's zoom in, selecting this arc, this line, this arc, this line, and this arc. Activating the center point, it will be our origin. Head back to objects and add this circle as well. Selecting OK and selecting finish sketch. Heading to home view. Let's turn on the visibility of our sketch one. And I'm going to hit E for extrude and select this profiles. And recall our favorite parameter, which is D8. And let's change the direction to symmetric, measurement to be whole length. Operation join, selecting OK. Let's head back to our timeline and unsuppress this features and inspect. So this one is not needed, same with circular pattern. This cut, this fillet, this circular pattern. So let me head back to after extrude 4. And this time, let's sketch on our XZ plane. Let me head over to our origin folder, twirl this down. Hovering over XZ, right-clicking on this, and selecting Create Sketch. Let's zoom in. Next, I'm going to hit P for Project and Project This Geometry. Projection Link Enabled, selecting OK. I'm going to hit L for Line, Create a Line from this point. Left-click, move over here. Left click and hold to create an arc. Release and double left click on this point. Hitting escape. Let's add constraints. Let me have this perfectly horizontal, selecting this line. Once more, selecting this line, right click and selecting horizontal. Hitting escape, selecting this arc and this line. Right click and selecting tangent. So instead of heading up, that technique brings out the possible constraints depending on your selection. I'm going to hit D for dimension and let's dimension the distance of the center point to our origin by 4T. Inspecting, heading back to front view. I'm going to hit C for circle and add that circle as well. Diameter to be 8, hitting enter. And uh, finally, let's uh, close this up. Hitting L for line, left click here and uh, double left click. Hitting escape, inspecting, selecting finish a sketch. I'm going to hit E for extrude and let's extrude this uh, profile. 
direction to be symmetric, measurement to be whole length, and I'm going to key in 12. And because this new extrusion is not touching this face, the operation automatically turns into new body. Selecting OK. And notice here we have a uh, gap. I'm going to select this uh, face. Hit E4 Extrude. And for the extent type, we're going to change this to Object. And that extrusion will be up to this face. So notice, because it intersects, this body, the operation automatically is joined. Leaving the default, selecting OK. And before we create the gap here, let's first create the cut extrusion for this uh, feature. Heading back to Fusion 360. And for us to have uh, that cut extrusion, we need to update our sketch. So heading back once more to Sketch 1, double left click on this. And I'm going to hit L for a line, creating a line here. Creating a line here. Hitting Escape. Next, hitting D for dimension. Let me dimension this line and this line. The angle to be 120. And the angle between this line and this line to be 45. Hitting escape and notice this line intersects with the circle center point. Next, let's mirror these two lines. To the other side, I'm going to hit S for sketch shortcuts, typing M, I, and selecting this. Once more for you to see, typing M, I, and selecting mirror, the one on top. Target objects, it will be this line and this line, activating mirror line. And that mirror line will be this horizontal line. Selecting OK and selecting Finish Sketch. Let's turn on once more the visibility of our Sketch 1. And to have a better view, I'm going to turn off the visibility of our body and hit E for Extrude. And this time, I'm going to select this uh, Profiles. This profile. So eight profiles selected. And let's turn on the visibility of a body two. The operation, it will be cut. Direction to be symmetric. Measurement to be whole length. And I'm going to type in once more our favorite parameter, which is D8 divided by 2. Selecting OK. And one of the best practice when adding fillets is to have them created at the later stage of our part modeling. Let's now focus on creating the gap here. And this time, I'm going to hit R for rectangle to quickly enter sketch mode. Target plane to be our XY plane. Let me zoom in and turn off the visibility of body 2. Let me create a quick rectangle here. Hitting escape. Zoom in. I want the midpoint of this line coincident with our origin. So with both of them selected, I'm going to right-click, Selecting Midpoint. Let's uh, zoom out. In addition, make sure 
this end goes uh, past this arc. Let's now hit D4 dimension and dimension this to be 2. Hitting enter. Hitting escape. And once more, let's pull this to the left. Or uh, feel free to add a dimension to lock this up. Let's now select a finish sketch. Let's turn off the visibility of sketch 1. Hit E4 extrude and select this profile. Next, turning on the visibility of this body. For the direction, it will be symmetric. Measurement whole length and typing in our favorite parameter, which is a D8. Operation cut and selecting OK. Let's add the fillets, hitting F for a fillet, selecting this edges, selecting this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge. Zooming out and inspecting for the value. I'm going to type in our favorite parameter, D8 divided by 4. Leaving the defaults, selecting OK, hit F once more, and I prefer the fillet for this to be an additional feature. And the value to be 8, selecting OK. And congratulations for completing phase two of this Model Mania 2015 challenge. The next lesson, we are going to create a static stress simulation. To perform a simulation study, our model needs to be saved in the cloud first. I have gone ahead and already created a copy for this, and I prefer deleting the suppressed features. So selecting them all, hitting delete, and now I'm going to hit Control S for save. Notice here I have already defined its target location, and I prefer naming this as 02-SIM. Selecting save. And notice the name of our tab is now 02-SIM version 1. And as I head into our data panel, our newly saved design is currently here. Let's now change a workspace, heading to this drop down and selecting simulation. And for the study type, it will be static stress. Let's double click on this. In addition, notice up on our toolbar under solve, we have a pre-check. As I select a pre-check, it gives us the list of important inputs that should be defined before we can finally select solve. Let me close this. And currently it is denoted as and X mark. And the typical flow for defining a, a static stress simulation study is first, depending on the situation, we are going to simplify, define the materials, add constraints, loads, so on and so forth, until finally given the green light to select solve. Let's inspect the 2D drawing for phase two. And notice here, our material is AISI 1020. For the constraints, we need to fix this green faces. And for the loads, it will be applied to this four faces, totaling 1,000 newtons. Heading back to Fusion 360, heading over to materials. And under study materials, let's select this uh, drop down 
and the look for AISI 1020. I'm scrolling down. So we have two options here. Let's select 1020 hot rolled and selecting OK. Notice on our browser under study materials still AISI 1020 is reflected here. Let's now define the constraints. Adding up the constraints and selecting structural constraints. And for the type, it will be fixed. The targets is this two cylindrical faces. Enabling the axis for X, Y, and Z. Selecting OK. And for the loads, selecting structural loads. For the type, it will be force and the targets are this four cylindrical faces. Let's head over to top view and grab this rotate handle. And to be exact, I'm going to key in negative 90. And for the magnitude, making sure under change units, this is in newtons, it will be a thousand. Selecting OK. And notice above under solve from X mark under pre check, this is now a green check mark, which means we now have the permission to select solve. Selecting this, we have two options to perform the simulation study on the cloud or locally through our machine. So notice here, if cloud, it requires five cloud credits. This instance, I prefer doing the simulation locally on my machine and selecting solve. Simulation complete. Notice here, we have the results details and the actual minimum safety factor is at a three. Let's select close. This one as well. Notice at our right, we have a color bar. The green one indicating satisfactory results. The blue one being the best. The red one being the worst. In addition, we can also view the various results under this drop down for stress. I can head over to our color bar. Notice this triangle. I can move this up to have a better visualization of the results. Also under this drop down, we have the ability to view the displacement, the reaction force, and the strain. Let me head back to stress. And to add under a deformation, so notice here we have undeformed which gives us the original shape without any deformation effects. The actual deformation, so notice, the actual deformation through the naked eye, it looks like nothing has happened. And the adjusted is an exaggeration of the results. Let me head over to front view. And to finish this up, under results, I'm going to check animate and select two way, leaving the defaults, and I'm going to hit the play button. Another visualization tool to see the effects of our material, constraints, and loads. And that SOLIDWORKS Model Mania 2015 made in Fusion 360.